We've talked about race conditions, which is one way that having parts of your code interact can break things. Another way code can interfere with other code is when code is not re-entrant. We need to define that, see how it works, and what happens when it doesn't work, and then how to fix the code to make it re-entrant. A block of code is re-entrant if it can be interrupted in the middle, called again, and then the first call completes. Uh, that's a definition that's a little hard to picture. It's easier for me to understand if I draw the call stack. Reentrant means that foo gets called. Then something happens to make foo get interrupted. Maybe it's really an interrupt, or it's an intentional recursive call, or foo just makes some other call. Then whatever interrupted foo makes another call on foo. So foo has two stack frames in the same call stack. Eventually, everything above the first foo exits, and then that call gets to finish running. If all of that can happen, and foo always behaves the way we expect it to, then foo is reentrant. Clearly, we need an example. My example uses recursion, but not in the mathy scary way. Suppose we're going to keep track of parts of something. Some parts are simple parts, just one thing. But other parts are composite parts, meaning that they're created from a set of other parts. For this example, all we need is to build the get description method. For a simple part, it just gives the name of the part. For a composite part, it gives the name of the part and then the list of what the part is made of. To see how we use that, here's a main that builds a part and prints out its description. It creates two simple parts named A1 and B1, and then puts them together into a composite part named inner composite. Then it puts that inner composite part and another simple part named C1 into a new composite part named nested composite. We ask for that object's description, and we get this output. Let's look a little closer at how get description works. The main calls it on nested composite, so that will go onto our call stack. Since that is a composite part, get description will start by building the first line of nested composite's description. And then it calls get description on each part that nested composite contains. The first part in its parts list is inner composite, so we will call get description on that object. That puts that call onto the call stack. Aha! We have created the risk of reentrancy problems because get description is on the stack above another call to get description. With this code, the call for inner composite finishes, having successfully described itself and its two inner parts. Then the get description for net composite finishes describing its parts and finishes normally. Whew, no trouble there. So we have the first way that we can know your code is reentrant. If it only uses local variables, it's reentrant. The interrupting call can't affect any of the first call's data. Since they don't share anything, everything will be okay. So let's make them share something to show how this could not be reentrant. This output is pretty messy. If we had more complicated parts, it'd be really hard to tell where the description of one part ends and another begins. This line is a beginning but it's also within this part. So I'd like to give each composite part a unique number that we could put on its beginning and ending lines to help us pair them up. And as a bonus, let's output how many composite parts we find. To do that, I'm gonna add a static integer named count to the composite part record. I marked it static, so there is only one for the class. Every instance will share the same one. So every time an instance increments it, it gets bigger for everybody. Then I make get description increment that count as its first act. The first call will make the count one, the second will make it two, and so on. We can use that number as our unique part number, putting it into the opening and closing lines of this part's description. Change our main to output the count and we should be good, right? Here's the output from the composite part we built before. It does add identifiers to the descriptions and the count looks right. However, look right here. 
The ending tag of the nested composite says it is part number two when it started as part number one. That is not good. This version of get description is not reentrant. The data they share is that count variable. Because the inner call on get description increments it between the two places that the outer call uses it, the identifiers in the outer call puts at the beginning and ending of its description don't match. So, for code to not be reentrant, there has to be data that is shared between the two calls. The inner call has to modify that data, and the outer call has to use that data after the inner call completes. Now that we understand the conditions necessary for code to be not reentrant, we can fix this code so that it is reentrant. The trick to doing that, almost always, is to keep a copy of the shared data so that you're using a consistent version of it. In this case, let's save that count to a local variable named ID and use that in our description. Run that, and our output is beautiful. We only have to worry about reentrancy problems if a method can be interrupted and called again before the first call completes. That puts two calls to the same method on one call stack. If the two calls use some shared piece of data, like our count, then we need to worry if the second call changes the value of that shared data. If it does, and the first call subsequently uses that value, we might have a reentrancy problem. In most situations, we can fix a reentrancy problem by storing a copy of the shared data into a local variable and using that variable throughout the method. That makes each call on the method use a consistent value, and most of the time, that'll make everything okay. Now that we've talked about race conditions and reentrancy problems, we need to talk about whether code can do both of those things at the same time. 